What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googleicious for all the Google that we can pack inside of a show each week. Let's get to the show, and Google I.O. is just a couple months away, and one of the big focuses this year will be about design. Now, Google has added more sessions on Android user experience, wearable app design, speech interfaces, and more, and it's clear that the Googs really wants to make a push around design. Now, they've even released three videos showing the design process of making things simpler for Glass, Maps, and even Search, and its move to voice. This is the way in which people are talking to Google. They're doing it through this tiny little box. I said, well, why don't we make that bigger? It was very simple design change, and auto completions gets larger. And people started noticing them more. By noticing them more, they actually started using it more. See, bigger is better for uh, search bars. All right, Google I.O. is also a chance for the Big G to reveal new hardware, and we've seen plenty of Nexus products from them in the past. It's been a long-standing rumor, but according to Digitimes, Google reportedly plans to release an 8-inch HTC-made tablet. Their Nexus 7 tablet has been produced by Asus, and their Nexus 10 has been manufactured by Samsung. ACC and Google have worked together in the past, so we'd expect to see some sort of announcement at I.O. if this Nexus 8 is coming this year. And ACC is known also for its elegant hardware, and you can look no further than the HTC One, but their camera image quality has been a point of criticism because of its 4 megapixel ultra pixel resolution. Now, in an interview with Vodafone, ACC's camera expert Simon Whitehorn spoke about 4K video and DSLR image quality, but he also dropped a tidbit saying that optical zooming on a smartphone is not far off at all for HTC. Now, they could be one of the first to get a true optical lens in a smartphone, but they're also the first to say this. HTC wants to own the selfie market. <laughs> yes, and Whitehorn added, you'll see a lot more investment in that area. In some markets, 90% of pictures taken are selfies. Plus, he says, selfies are a very different imaging environment. So guys, to sum things all up, the self-obsessed market is the next battlefield for smartphones. All right, let's take a breather and check out a how-to with Linlaw to get the most out of your GS5 camera. First, be sure to check that your default settings are tailored to your exact preferences. To adjust them, tap the little gear icon in the corner and scroll through each of these items. Personally, I always turn my compositional grid lines on to help me frame and straighten out my pictures. For frequently changed settings, you can have three shortcuts directly accessible on the viewfinder's dash. Just long tap any of these settings and drag them over. Now there's one particular setting here that brings me to my second tip. You've probably seen HDR or high dynamic range imaging before, but the GS5 now has the option to toggle real-time feedback of what your HDR image would look like before you take a picture. Make this toggle your friend. HDR combines several shots taken at varying levels of exposure and composites it into one image. This can result in really striking, almost surreal photos that have great contrast. Sometimes, though, it can also create unnatural images that you might not like. So be sure to check by tapping on and off the HDR icon, which is represented by this little Venn diagram looking icon here. Third, familiarize yourself with photo effects. You can access some of them directly on the camera through the settings menu here. It's indicated by the magic wand icon and displays the filters in real time. Other effects can be applied after you take the picture. These are accessible through the photo manager. Just go to your gallery, tap on this Polaroid with a pencil icon, and several options will appear. Fourth, get to know selective focus. This is a new GS5 feature that lets you change the focal point of your picture. By manipulating the depth of field, pictures can look more professional and even dramatic. You have to turn this option on before taking a photo, so it's good to have an idea about it while you're shooting. To turn it on, tap the icon with the two human heads in the camera dash. The device will tell you that for best results, stand at most a foot and a half away from the closest object. The object itself should also be at least four and a half feet away from the background. Tap on the object you want in your foreground and click the shutter. To initiate selective focus, click on the icon here with the two little heads. Three options will emerge, near, far, and pan focus. Near will bring your closest object into focus and blur out everything behind it. Far sharpens only the background, and pan gets everything in focus. When you're finished, tap done to save your changes. Thanks, Lynn, but I was actually hoping there would be tips for taking selfies. All right, now sticking with phones, we're still hoping and expecting to see a new Nexus phone at Google I.O. It's almost a no-brainer we'll see one, but according to Chinese rumor sites, Google might be working with chipmaker MediaTek 
to take on a budget Nexus device that could be priced as low as $100 in hopes to broaden its global market share. And it would be a direct competitor to ex-Google company Motorola that has had real success with the Moto G's 4.5 inch screen, quad core processor, and all day battery at a $99 price point with contract. And guys, in some fun stuff, the Googs is still pushing smartphone innovation with Project Tango. We've shown off Tango in past shows and its ability to track the full 3D motion of its smartphone while creating a 3D map of the environment and space around it. Now, they recently took their motion mapping phone and paired it with Sphere robots in a zero gravity environment to see how it would react and the data it would capture in a near real life space scenario. Now they never reveal the results, but it's another really cool way that Google could be able to even create 3D maps of space or build new applications with Project Tango, or it was just an excuse to do flying monkey tricks in zero gravity. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next week for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.